Hey everybody, what's going on? Coach Abel here telling you all about in this webinar how to optimize metabolism. Uh, a lot of people want to know more about this, even though I write a lot about it, talk a lot about it. So we're going to get into it in terms of the research um, and how the research has been pretty consistent over time. So let's look at how to optimize metabolism. Now I'm going to start with the consumer, the consumer mindset when it comes to this because most people tie metabolism to weight loss and weight control. And although that isn't entirely uh, true in the strictest sense, we'll start there, but I'll point out other factors as we go. For instance, I'm gonna start with this study from 1986. This study um, in Israel, for example, found that vegetarians weighed about 20 pounds less than non-vegetarians, yet they appeared to be eating about 400 calories more every day. Let's put this uh, research up on the screen for you. I'll just put the PubMed link up here and the name of the research, Energy Intake and Body Weight in Ovo-Lacto Vegetarians from the Journal of Gastroenter Gastroenterology, 1986. And here's the thing, think about that, weight control by eating more. And that's going to be a consistent theme as we go along, how to optimize metabolism. As I always say, we'll put this on the screen as well and then put the research back up there. Metabolism must be fed, not starved. So keep that in mind as we go along and we'll put that research uh, back up on the screen for you. Actually, let's put the abstract back on the screen because um, if we put the abstract up, I have put in bold points from this research that we should take a look at. So we see that in the abstract, vegetarians have a lower body weight than omnivores. Um, and then I put in bold key elements of this research. The average weight of the vegetarians was significantly lower than that of the omnivores. That word significant is going to pop up more and more. And that's important when we talk about how to optimize metabolism because uh, the proof is in the results, of course. So the average weight of the vegetarians was significantly lower than that of the omnivores, even though the vegetarian diet supplied significantly higher amount of calories than the non-vegetarian diet. So what we see that word significant again. So the vegetarians are eating more, weighing less. Next in the abstract, what I've bolded for you. Carbohydrate consumption was higher in the vegetarians while protein consumption was lower. I've spoken about this in previous webinars as well. Check out my webinar, Protein Con Job. My other webinar, Was I Wrong About Protein? And you will see the research that reflects this as well. And then you'll see in the abstract the final thing from this study that I bolded for you. The lower body weight of vegetarians, despite a higher caloric intake, is of considerable interest. Now, given that this was 1986, of course, they're going to say of considerable interest. But since then, we've got a lot more research. So, boom. Let's go over these highlights here. Now, as I always say when discussing calories and discussing, for instance, how fiber works, it's not so much what you eat but what you absorb that matters the most. And that, again, points to how limited we are when we think of calorie counting as somehow equating to metabolism because the calories you take in are not the same qualitatively and how they're digested, metabolized, assimilated, retained, things like that. So it's not just what you eat that matters, but what you absorb. And the Israeli vegetarians were eating particularly healthy diets, averaging about 70 grams of fiber a day, which is way more than double what most people get who eat a standard diet. And this helps explain why and how people eating more whole plant foods seem to lose more weight, even at the same estimated caloric intake. Now, keep in mind that these people ate substantially more calories per day and substantially more carbs and less protein. How do you optimize metabolism? Well, there's your first clue as to how to, how to optimize metabolism. More carbs, less protein, almost the opposite of what you hear in the North American diet mentality mindset. Um, so let's take a look at another study. Let's start going... Um, you know, more recent and see what the research has to say. So here's this study. We'll put the PubMed uh, link up for you as well. 
and the name of the study, Association Between Dietary Phytochemical Index and Three-Year Changes in Weight, Waist Circumference, and Body Adiposity Index in Adults. And this is from the Applied Physiology, Nutrition, and Metabolism 2012. And what I like about studies like this is the name of the actual journal itself, folks. One, it's about applied. It's not theoretical. Uh, it's not comparative. And it's physiology, nutrition, and metabolism. So it looks specifically at metabolism. Boom. So if you want to know what the research says, you have to know where to look. Now, I'm going to put some quotes up here directly from the research so that you can follow along because it's going to be very, very important uh, that we do that. So um, here's a, one quote uh, from, from this um, phytochemical index study and three-year changes in body weight. And I quote, dietary intake of fruits in the highest quartile was also associated with lower weight gain during the study period. There was significant, there's that word again, inverse association between the highest quartile category of dietary phytonutrient intake with the three-year changes in weight and BAI, which just means fancy way, scientific jargon for body fat levels, folks. So their conclusion is, we'll put this on the screen and then I'll explain it to you, higher dietary phytochemical index intake could have favorable effects on prevention of weight gain and reduction of body adiposity in adults. And guess which foods are richest in phytochemical content, folks? That's right, plant foods and carbs from fruits and veggies to legumes and potatoes, right across the board, phytochemical uh, amounts are higher in these foods. Let's put a picture of the lowly potato up there because I've talked about how wonderful potatoes are in the past as well, and people's fear of starches, people's fear of fruits, and what we see here, of course, is the exact opposite. The more fruit people ate, the lower their body weight, etc., etc. Um, so why would such foods of high phytochemical index, why would they prevent weight gain and reduce body fat? And optimized metabolism is a key reason, and that works via fiber intake and via phytochemical combinations as well that you're only going to find in plant foods. Now, as I've also covered in previous webinars, um, so what we're seeing so far, eating more, weighing less, and it just happens to be that people eating more plant foods and diets are even burning more calories while sleeping. But that's weight control and weight loss and maintaining uh, lower levels of body fat. But let's look at metabolism directly now. And I want to put this piece of uh, research up on the screen. We'll use the Pub, PubMed link again. Uh, in 1994, researchers discovered that people eating more plant-based for at least two years had an 11% higher resting metabolic rate. Wow, boom. And this is from the journal Metabolism Clinical and Experimental. And the name of the study, Sympathetic Nervous System Activity and Resting Metabolic Rate in Vegetarians. So look at that, an 11% higher resting metabolic rate. I want you to imagine how that plays out over the course of days, weeks, months, and years. So not only do you optimize metabolism, but an optimized metabolism stabilizes weight. And that, of course, also helps keep metabolism optimized instead of yo-yoing all over the place. So that's really important as well. There's that piece of research for you. Let's look at another piece of research here. High vegetable fats intake is associated with high resting and energy expenditure in vegetarians. This is from the journal Nutrients. And we'll put that link up on the screen for you as well. What we see here, eating higher and more respectable amounts of fiber intake found a 22% higher resting metabolic rate. Wow. And that translates into burning off hundreds of extra calories a day without doing a thing. Protract that over the course of days, weeks, months, and years. And is it any wonder that people eating a whole food plant-based diet are lean without trying? The title of my book by the same name. The researchers themselves concluded that this underlines the need to encourage people to follow a plant-based diet. So they look at resting, high resting energy expenditure, in other words, burning more calories while at rest and while sleeping, 
22% higher resting metabolic rate uh, from people eating more plant foods, etc. So, and this, the research has concluded, underlines the need to encourage people to follow a plant-based diet. Now, the researchers also found a higher resting energy expenditure among vegetarians, and yet again, while at the same time, these, these vegetarians in the study consuming higher carbs and higher fats from plants and higher calories overall. So again, what's the research reflecting on how to optimize metabolism? You have to feed metabolism, not starve it, and you feed it best when you feed it high fiber and high phytonutrient intake and higher calories. That's how you optimize a metabolism and keep it optimized and revving and humming along. And I've experienced this myself and I've seen it in so many of my clients who have transitioned to a whole food plant-based diet. They end up eating more food over time and losing weight and controlling weight at a lower uh, body weight set point, which is what a lot of people are after, especially as you age. But let's continue looking at the research or at least some of the research that I've selected for you. Uh, a meta-analysis of a dozen Randomized controlled trials involving more than a thousand research subjects found that people placed in a more plant-based diet group lost significantly more weight. And again, I'm just going to put the PubMed link up here for you and the name of the research, Vegetarian Diets and Weight Reduction, a meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials from the Journal of General Internal Medicine. And again, folks, if you want to know where the experts are in terms of metabolism, it's people who look at hormonal endo endocrinology, internal medicine specialists, and groups that study metabolism specifically, not just in relation to nutrition, etc. And note how recent this study is from 2016. That's relatively recent in terms of studies uh, that come out and that are looked at in terms of references. So let's just take a quick look at both the results and the conclusion sections. I put some highlights in bold again so you can follow along. Now, before we look at this study, here's an important point to note. This meta-analysis specifically included studies that compared plant-based nutrition to other diets that were also emphasizing healthier eating. It wasn't just a simple comparison between plant-based diet and a standard American diet. They actually looked at comparing the plant-based diet to other known healthy diets. So that's really important before we even dig in a little deeper. Now, what did the results have to say? Let's throw these up on the screen. And once again, I bolded what I thought was important for you to grasp and understand. So the first bold, overall individuals assigned to the vegetarian groups lost significantly more weight than those assigned to the non-vegetarian diet groups Subgroup analysis detected significant, there's that word again, weight reduction in subjects consuming a vegan diet. So the more, in other words, the more plant-based you go, the more weight you lose without necessarily trying. And this is really, really important as well, because again, it's all about feeding metabolism. So what you see in this study is that the more you go plant-based, the more of your proportion of your diet is plant-based, uh, the more weight reduction seems to happen, uh, and the leaner you are, the lower your BMI, etc. Conclusions from this study, vegetarian diets appeared to have significant benefits on weight reduction compared to non-vegetarian diets. Boom. So there you go, and that was a recent study and a, and, uh, a meta-analysis that was pretty important um, because it looked at other healthy diets as well. And that's an important consideration. Now factor in all these metabolic elements and let's look at weight loss and weight control. Again, and here's one study, we'll put the PubMed link up for this one because it's the easiest for you to follow. And the name of this study, Comparative Effectiveness of Plant-Based Diets for weight loss, a randomized controlled trial of five different diets from the Journal of Nutrition 2015. Again, pretty recent. And subjects were randomized to eat purely plant-based, and they lost more weight than subjects who were just avoiding meat, as well as people who were pesco-vegetarian, semi-vegetarian, or full omnivore. 
Now here's a point uh, from the research in bold. By the end of six month study, people randomized to eat a completely plant-based diet lost twice as much weight compared to those who ate any fish or any other meat. And that is really important as well. And again, from the research, subjects on the plant-based diet were instructed to eat however much they wanted, whenever they wanted. Now that's the kind of diet any person should be able to stick to long-term. So whole food, plant-based, unprocessed foods, and what we see emerging from the research again and again, if we look specifically at metabolism, we see uh, weight loss and weight control in the very simplest and easiest manners while eating more calories. So this is very, very important. And when we even compare it to other healthy diets, it still holds up to be true. Now let's talk about other elements of how to optimize metabolism and why that would be important. Um, when we look at even in school age children, because let's go through the cycle of life, children uh, in school age, people, children who ate more meat, eggs, and dairy were also associated with higher odds of obesity, whereas plant-based equivalents like veggie burgers were not. That, that goes all the way back to that 1986 study we, we talked about at the beginning. Um, but plant-based dieters as children um, appeared to be protective against obesity. And here's a study that Here's a study that reflects that. We'll throw this on the screen from PubMed again, from the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition from 2010, Vegetarian Diets and Childhood Obesity Prevention. So let's just put, there's the link, but let's put the abstract up there. And once again, I bolded the researchers' comments that matter the most in terms of this subject matter, because let's get something else straight, folks. Prevention is a lot better than cure when it comes to weight control and being lean and staying lean. It's a lot easier to achieve a weight and sustain a weight than it is to lose that weight and keep it off. So what we see here in the abstract in bold, an exploration of food patterns that are beneficial in the primary of uh, prevention of obesity is warranted. That should go without saying. Epidemiological studies indicate that vegetarian diets are associated with a lower body mass index and a lower prevalence of obesity in adults and children, which is very, very important. A lot of you are parents out there and you don't want your kids to grow up having to fight weight issues, body image issues, et cetera, et cetera. And you want them to be healthy, especially with what the world is showing us uh, lately with pandemics and you know how people are susceptible to being uh, sick and worse than others, depending on lifestyle elements and factors and risk factors. So it's really important if, to prevent these types of lifestyle ill health promoters, prevent them rather than fight against them. So here's another quote from this research. Similarly, compared with non-vegetarians, vegetarian children are leaner and their BMI difference becomes greater during adolescence. So not only are they leaner in childhood, but that difference between non-vegetarians expands even more um, <coughs> as they reach adolescence. So studies exploring the risk of overweight and food groups and dietary patterns indicate that a plant-based diet seems to be a sensible, thank goodness for that word, sensible approach for the prevention of obesity in children Plant-based diets are low in energy density and high in complex carbohydrate, fiber, and water, which may increase satiety and resting energy expenditure. I put those in different colors because look how important they are. You want to know how to optimize metabolism and what the results of that are. You don't go through your day feeling hungry and thinking about food and obsessing about food because you've got increased satiety levels. And you've got a higher resting energy expenditure, which the research I've shown through the research through this whole webinar keeps saying over and over again, people on plant-based diets burn more calories at rest. That's how you want to be. That's the results of an optimized metabolism. And this research goes on to say plant-based dietary patterns should be encouraged for optimal health and environmental benefits. Of course, food policies are warranted to support social marketing messages to reduce the cultural and economic forces that make it difficult to promote plant-based dietary patterns. Now that's sort of 
a subconscious message to kind of skirt around the power of the meat and dairy industry to sort of suppress messages that plant-based diets are better for us, better for our world, better for our climate, but also better for our health and better for our, our body image if that is important to us. So how do you optimize metabolism? You eat a plant-based, high-carbs, whole food diet, and the results of that are increased satiety, so you're not walking around all day thinking and obsessing about food and being hungry, and you have a higher resting energy expenditure uh, than people who follow different types of diets. Those two things produce a double whammy of lean without trying, essential, easy weight control. These are the ways that you optimize metabolism. Metabolism must be fed, not starved. And if you optimize metabolism, the results of that are easy, sustainable weight control. And that's what's really important. Now, that's just a snapshot of the research that I'm showing you. Um, I could easily come up with more research, but then you get start getting into so much research that it goes beyond a webinar into necessitating writing a book or whatever. So that's what the research has to say. How to optimize metabolism is almost the exact opposite of what still exists in the North American diet mentality monstrosity of high protein, fear of carbs kind of nonsense where what we see in the research is the exact opposite. The higher the carbs, the higher the fruit, the higher the phyto in intake, then the better the profile is for resting energy expenditure, for weight control, weight reduction, etc., etc. Lean without trying. That's not only how to optimize metabolism, but it also speaks to the results of an optimized metabolism. And remember this also, an optimized metabolism is a forgiving metabolism, which means you can enjoy living in the world of food abundance and have the odd cheat meal, cheat day, cheat week on vacations, etc., etc., with not coming back and having to diet off added weight. So preponderance of the evidence on how to optimize metabolism. I hope that made sense to you. If it does, by all means, pl uh, please hit like and subscribe and all that stuff. I'm supposed to say that at the end of all videos, but really um, it's important to me if you like and subscribe. But if you don't, that's fine too, as long as you benefit this uh, from this webinar somehow or other. So that's what the research has to say all the way from the 80s uh, till now. We see a consistent message on how to optimize metabolism and the results of an optimized metabolism. So again, hope you benefited from that, and I will see you all in the next webinar.